talk actually originated a little less than a year ago for the uh, Rational Innovation Conference, and I've delivered it to several um, IIBA uh, customers around the, or me, uh, not IIBA customers, but IIBA groups around the country as well since then. Um, and it's come about because there's there's been a I, IBM and Rational have a lot of different products, and we get asked frequently, well, which product should I use? And it really depends on on what your organization is doing and how it operates and and the types of compliance and regulatory issues you sit under, and the type and scope of the system, and really the practice as you follow the development organization. So, um, and and we really can't answer that question with without first understanding how you're going to do your requirements. So this talk really originated as as, a, as several conversations we had with customers about not understanding the the product line from Rational. Um, but really it goes back to the roots of how is it best for you to do and manage your requirements um, and through conversations with, with many, many different customers. So that's really what we're going to talk about today. And uh, so the outline of the class is we, or the class, excuse me, I just got done with training for the last three days. Um, the outline of the agenda for us today, the talk, is um, we want to first contrast really traditional requirements method gathering with agile requirements method gathering. There's a lot of organizations that, that do one or the other. In fact, there's a lot that do a hybrid, and they don't even really recognize that. So we want to want to contrast that, too. Then we want to discuss popular requirements methods, whether they be the traditional shall type requirements or use case analysis or user stories or storyboards and sketches. We want to run through all of those, because those really are the techniques we have at our disposal. Um, and, and contrast their various strengths and weaknesses and where they're appropriate and where they might be not appropriate. And then take a look at reasons for blending those approaches. Right? So some people look at an approach and say, well, we don't need that because we already do this instead. Well, there's opportunity here really to go blend these types of approaches. Um, and we want to we make that case and then understand uh, where the rational tools fit. And this really is a tools talk, but we, do, we are a rational business partner. We do understand how organizations leverage their tools. Very few people do requirements uh, without some kind of tool. Unless you're an agile group with, you do your storyboards on the walls, or maybe you're an organization that just manages requirements with sticky notes or Microsoft Word, you probably have a tool in the mix someplace. We want to talk about the tools and how they can support the, the types of things we're going to discuss today. So just a quick background. Um, uh, this slide here just illustrating the things we do in requirements. We define requirements, elicit them, analyze them, spe uh, specify them, validate them you know, through various process and activities. And then even bigger is we have to manage them. That's really where we have a tool. We have to have traceability between requirements. Maybe we have some governance requirements or some customer requirements. We trace those down to maybe systems requirements, which go into different software stack requirements. So a lot of traceability. We have to manage change. Uh, and then we also have to do some reporting and tracking and document generation, et cetera, out of all these things. So not just understanding the requirements, but managing them over the life of the system. So we've been doing that effectively you know, for the last several decades in, in software system development, very, varying levels of success anyway. But an observation about what's changed over the last 10 years is really system complexity has grown dramatically over the last, even the last five years or decade or so. Um, there's much more user experience. There's much more behavioral demands. Uh, if we think about the the systems that we look at today, and I'm in, I'm in the system space, but it's also IT systems as well. Um, you just look at a gas pump or your phone or or any type of system. There's a lot more dynamic user behavioral interaction, and those are the types of activities that's very difficult to specify up front, right? To come up with a, a a fixed requirement up front for how this system is supposed to behave.